I ain't Mitch Counter, and this congressional hearing's cannon fodder. This is uh, Mr. Chairman Royce, the House Foreign Affairs Committee. This is from April 15th, 2015, and this is part two, uh, connecting to this article right here that I highlighted in part one. So, let's watch it on the big golden screen. Let's see if we got the volume. I'm interested in here is that usually around the globe people hunger for information. Sorry. And especially, um, one of the questions I'm interested in here is that usually around the globe people hunger for information, and especially when they think they're being denied facts. But what seems to be happening in Russia is that people begin to presume that these conspiracies are in fact true uh, as they're you know, introduced to this on a daily basis. Uh, uh, the, the, you repeat it over and over and over again, and suddenly the, the conspiratorial theories begin to take on um, a life of its own. And I wondered if maybe the panelists could ex explain the factors that make this Russian disinformation campaign so seemingly so effective uh, from some of the polling I've seen inside Russia in terms of the credibility that people have uh, to information which would, would logic would contradict. Uh, but also, I was going to ask you a little logic. bit about um, <laughs> the platform that, that it provides for fringe and radical views, uh, not just in Russia but worldwide, as as sort of the the extreme fringe is given a, a platform uh, for what otherwise would not be considered reputable television. You know, most broadcasts wouldn't have on the, the, the types of voices uh, with these conspiratorial theories. But maybe you could explain the process that RT un undertakes to select its experts. Um, and I'll just turn it over to the panel for your responses. Um, that's an interesting question, selecting the experts. That's an interesting question, says Miss Wall. I don't know if you know who Liz Wall is, but uh, this is Liz Wall. She resigned about a year ago. Tens of millions of people, or ten, uh, about 10 million people probably. Maybe a little bit more. Um, watch videos on YouTube about it, okay? Now, she quit over the uh, Ukraine crisis, if I recall, right? And... Though this is Paul Joseph Watson right here, this video Prison Planet Live made is actually pretty good. Um, despite uh, Paul Joseph Watson's hypocrisy in the past, but oops, I didn't want to go to that, but whatever. Um, just search it if you want to know more about this cunt. Um, and that's my opinion, that she's a cunt. Can't understand normal thinking. Now notice how that congressman though uses the uh, word conspiracy, um, conspiracy theories, conspiratorial, yada yada. Okay, this is the definition of conspiracy. I got a better one here though from my 1987 Webster's Dictionary. Um, the act of conspiring is number one. Number two is an evil, unlawful, unlawful, treacherous, or surreptitious plan formulated in secret by two or more persons. Semicolon plot. Three, a combination of persons for a secret, unlawful, or evil person. Sorry, evil purpose. Blech. Looked away for a sec. Now, though, Russia today, which is mostly what they're going to be focusing on here, um, is certainly not perfect by a long shot. And you're welcome to look into that, because I'm not going to get into that right now. That's not the point. The point is how it connects to this article in part one that I uh, previewed. But let's listen to what this cunt says. Because that word, I think, is used... For your responses. Um, that's an interesting question, selecting the experts, because that word, I think, is used loosely in, in Russian television. Essentially, anybody that is, is an expert is somebody that is willing to tone to, to toe the Russian line and to, to, I mean, they could be from the far left, they could be from the far right, they could have uh, unconventional, deranged uh, theories. Um, it, it, <laughs> I like how she uses the word deranged. Yeah, they're looking at her as if she's an expert. Come the fuck on. She's not an expert on dick squat. She's a fucking professional liar. So is that fucking congressman. It didn't matter, and sometimes the producers would 
would scour the internet for for these for these experts. So now, one example I will give her credit for is uh, James Fetzer, who I have seen numerous times on RT. And sorry, that guy's full of fucking shit. What qualifies as an expert? It's it's kind of murky what that is. And why it's effective, I think you had mentioned that it provides this voice for, for fringe voices, extremists, and it works because it provides a, a place for these people, a place where these people can congregate and feed off of each other's biases. It's almost like a community that is almost like a cult, I would say. That. <laughs> of course, she relates it to being a cult. And yeah, she's talking about RT, but she's not just talking about RT at the same time. Um, she's talking about anything that's not, uh, you know, like the mainstream news in America is. Because RT does do some good work here and there. Uh, not perfect by any means. I mean, they put some crazy fucking shit on there, for fuck's sake. Um, is formed uh, online and they mobilize and they they feel like they are part of some enlightened um, fight against the establishment that they um, and they they find a home they find a place where they're heard and uh, they find a sense of belonging they find an outlet where they can where they can um, a platform to, to voice their deranged views of course she keeps using that word deranged now, remember that uh, it was the uh, Ukraine-Russia crisis, the fucking coup in Ukraine where she resigned over, okay? And this whole thing, this coup was caused by the United fucking States. That's been proven. Okay, fucking look into it. Um, then later we had the uh, MH17 whole deal. Um, hang on. Light up title. Ah, uh, this is being a bitch. Okay. MH17, horrific details of the plane that never crashed. And I suggest you search that. It's still on YouTube, last I checked. And, um... Well, a journalist made it down there to the uh, crash site. And what she found was a bunch of dead bodies that had appeared to have been dead for quite a while. And yet the United States kept reporting that Russia shot it down. Russian separatists, Russia, blah, blah, blah. And it was more than likely Ukraine um, and a Ukrainian jet. But nonetheless. And um, I know that uh, formerly of of Radio Free Europe, uh, Mr. Lack, who has, has since departed, had gotten a lot of uh, criticism for comparing Russia today and Russian propaganda to to ISIS propaganda. Yes, she did just compare Russian propaganda to ISIS propaganda. It's barely even fucking close. Come the fuck on. ISIS propaganda is Western propaganda. Okay. And I'm not saying Russia's fucking great too, you know. I'm not like Go Russia, go Russia fuck that shit. Okay. It's all a big old fucking stage show anyways, right? So, but what she says is just completely, utterly fucking ludicrous. And it's an attempt to fucking demonize people, even good people. It's not just about Russia today. It's not just about Russia. Um, and, and while, yes, there, there is a strong difference, we're talking about a terrorist organization versus a, a government, uh, you know, a nation state. I think he uh, did have credence in, in comparing the strat strategy that's there by using the internet to mobilize people that feel displaced, that feel like they've been on the outskirts of society, and give them a place where they can find a sense of belonging and maybe uh, make a difference in their own way. Okay, so making a difference for positivity is bad. Uh, well, she's comparing it to ISIS, though, but... Where the fuck is this fucking ISIS propaganda anyways that um, recruits people and shit? I've never seen it. I don't think they're fucking telling the truth about it. Um, show me some actual fucking proof, you know. Oh, there's 40,000 fucking ISIS accounts, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And who actually pays attention to them? Why don't fucking people who... Uh, you know, fucking hate ISIS, go troll them, for fuck's sake. Um, and it's a problem, and, and we see that it's effective. We see that they are um, shaping the discussion 
online, on message boards, on Twitter, on social media. And uh, the internet, you know, we, we thought that it would be this place where, where uh, you know, it's wonderful in a lot of ways because a lot of different viewpoints and, and a lot of different people have a voice like never before. Bullshit. But unfortunately, it's provided a forum where disinformation, false theories, uh, people that are just trying to make a name for themselves, bloggers or whatever. That Hey, that kind of sounds familiar. Um, yeah, there is disinformation on the internet. Fuck yes. Motherfuck yes. But <laughs> there's less disinformation from fucking RT than there is from fucking Western media. Have absolutely no accountability for the truth, are able to rile up a mass amount of people online. Well, for... I think... Okay, she's not really talking about RT there because uh, having no accountability, um, I'd be more likely to be classified by what she said or under what she said because, oh, I have no accountability because, you know, well, I don't show my face. I don't use my real identity whatever. Okay. And maybe just maybe that's what she's actually really talking about here. What's interesting oh, about it, I bet the use of raw violence, which they do a lot of on their YouTube, 1.4 billion hits is a lot, lot of hits. Raw violence so people will go RT. to the, the... I only see a little bit. It's pretty rare to see fucking raw violence on RT, to be honest. I've been on there quite a bit. The use of raw violence, and then that will be used as, uh, you know, part of a thesis on uh, some conspiracy theory that then is is played out. Uh, I, Of course, that ad hominem attack conspiracy theory. I uh, wondered, uh, uh, Peter, your, your take on this? Well, listen, the, the, this question, I think you've hit on, on one of the key issues here, uh, which goes, takes us all the this way through card. the problems at stake. They're not fringe anymore, these groups. Uh, we're talking about a France where Jean-Marie Le Pen's far-right party is surging in the polls. We're talking about a Hungary where Jobbik, uh, the far-right party, is rising and rising. We're talking about 20% of parliamentarians in the European Parliament having what we used to think were fringe, very pro-Russian views. Uh, among the people who vote for these parties, there is a lot of people who believe in conspiracies because they're working on a similar thing. They, conspiracies happen when people don't trust the institutions around them, don't trust parliament, don't trust media. If everyone's lying to you, then there must be a shadowy hand. So he just said conspiracies happen. Well, let's listen to him again. Views. Uh, among the people who vote for these parties, there is a lot of people who believe in conspiracies because they're working on a similar thing. They, conspiracies happen when people don't trust the institutions around them. Don't, Conspiracies happen when people don't trust the institutions around them. Um, no, people don't con trust the institutions around them because conspiracies are fucking happening. Bam. Trust Parliament, don't trust media. If everyone's lying to you, then there must be a shadowy hand. So the Kremlin is in this loop. It is pushing out more conspiracies to fan that audience. They are funding these parties. You know, we know that the Kremlin is funding Jean-Marie Le Pen in France. These are not fringe parties. This is actually now becoming the... Main are they actually party. doing this that? This is very, very frightening. Um, I actually don't know. Conspiracy is... What is conspiracy? It's sort of a linguistic sabotage on the uh, infrastructure of reason. You know, you... No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a linguistic sabotage on the fucking reasonable thinking people to demonize them, you fucktard. You can't have a reality-based discussion when everything becomes conspiracy. In Russia, the whole discourse is conspiracy. Everything is conspiracy. When an, a genuine opposition person like Alexei Navalny emerges in Russia, the first story the Kremlin does, he's one of ours. He's a conspiracy as well. Don't believe in him. It's all about destroying belief in anything. When you have no belief in truth, then you can't believe in anything. But also more insidiously than that, look, our, I'm going to get very grand now, our global order is based on the idea of a reality-based politics. Yeah. If, 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 if that reality-based sort of, uh, you know, base is destroyed, then you can't have, you know, international institutions and international dialogue. That reality he's talking about is a fucking delusion, okay, because this world order that he speaks of is a conspiracy in itself. Mm -hmm. To have a world order, it is a conspiracy, okay? A combination of persons for a secret unlawful evil purpose. That simple. I mean, I remember a quote from, a, I think, a Franciscan monk after the First Second World War. He's like, lying is not a form of communication. It uh, uh, rids people of their right to live in reality and makes a reality-based politics impossible. This you got to be fucking kidding me.